Welcome to Pentecostal Preaching Channel. Please subscribe to the channel if you enjoy what you see. Hit the bell to be notified when something new is uploaded. Have a great day. Well, let's give the Lord some praise together tonight. Hallelujah. Let's lift up the name of Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We worship you, God. We give you praise. We give you glory. Oh, let's just take a little time tonight just to really magnify the Lord. He deserves my best. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If he's been keeping you this week, thank him for that. If he's been blessing you this week, he's been strengthening you and empowering you this week, would you thank him for that? Thank you that I made it to the house of God. Thank you that I'm here in my right mind. Thank you I can feel your presence tonight. I thank you for what you're about to do in this house. Hallelujah. Let's just give God some praise in advance together right now. If you believe he's about to do something in the next few moments for you, for your family, for your situation, would you praise him for that right now? God, this is for what's about to happen. This is for what is coming. Hallelujah. We praise you, God. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I do feel faith in this house tonight. And um, I believe the Lord wants to work in a mighty way. And we're so glad to be here. And uh, thankful for all that the Lord is doing. For those that were filled with the Holy Ghost. On Sunday, there were miracles that took place, and I won't uh, disclose what was told me just yet, but but trust me that the Lord was healing on Sunday, and uh, I believe that I believe that's the will of God all the time, not a part of the time. These signs shall follow them that believe, and as long as there are believers, there should be signs following. I'm going to just tell you, Jesus never takes a vacation from filling people with the Holy Ghost, forgiving sins, healing people's body, or setting the captive free. It is always in order. I don't care if it's midweek Bible study. I don't care if it's Sunday morning. I don't care if it's in the break room on your job. It's a will of God to heal, to save, deliver. Amen. It's always in order. And uh, I've come with expectation tonight, and I know that many are in VBS, and God knows that, and that's not going to limit anything that the Lord is about to do in this service. I wonder if there's anyone that came with expectation tonight for the miraculous in this service. Anybody have a need in this house? Amen. Uh, it's not really profound. It's just truth that... Uh, if you come expecting nothing, you'll never be disappointed. But if you come expecting that anything can happen, you will never be disappointed. I've come expecting incredible things in the Holy Ghost tonight. Luke chapter 11, if you'll turn there with me, verse number 5. Luke 11. And verse number 5. Praise God. I believe that uh, we're seeing some miracles. I know that this church has miracles all the time because you are apostolic. But I do believe that God wants to take the church, not just this assembly, but the church as a whole, to a dimension of the miraculous in the last day that is like we have never seen before. I believe that. I, I really believe that God can take the church to a place where it's very hard for us to find sick people among the body. I believe that. I believe that. Well, hallelujah. He said we need to have great faith, and I'm just trying to have great faith. Amen. Why settle for being sick if God is willing to heal? And he is willing. Luke 11 and verse 5 and he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine in his journey 
he has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? If he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? If he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? I'm going to tell you, anything you need tonight, it's in this house. If you need the Holy Ghost, there's no reason you can't be filled before this service is over. If you need a healing in your body, if you need deliverance from unclean spirits, if you need deliverance from depression and anxiety, I am telling you that tonight, God, does anybody believe that with me right now? Would you let your faith rise with me? Let's just lift our hands and let's lift our voices together right now and let's bind together in the Holy Ghost. Let's believe right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God, we are, we are believing, we are expecting. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I bind every spirit of unbelief, every spirit that would distract or oppose your will in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, would you release ministering spirits into this house? We lose the will of God and the gift of faith to operate. Come on right now, let's let the Holy Holy Ghost begin to flow just for a moment. The Bible says building up your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. Would you do that right now? Let faith rise. Let faith rise in the name of the Lord Jesus. We are believing. We are expecting in Jesus' name. We praise you for what you're about to do. Hallelujah. Praise God. You can be seated. I want to talk to you tonight from the subject, the power of importunity. The power of importunity. We find that Jesus is teaching with a parable, and he begins to describe a scenario. If you could back these monitors down a hair just, just a little bit. He said, which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight? In this setting, in this time and place in history, it's very unsafe to travel this time of night and very inappropriate to come to someone's house at midnight. And we don't understand and the Lord does not disclose the details of why this man has chosen to travel in the middle of the night. It is unsafe. You are, you are a target for highwaymen and robbers that uh, roam up and down the countryside. They're, it's very unsafe and very uncertain. To, to You're taking your life into your own hands to do this. But we find that this man, for some reason or another, has chosen to travel late at night. And there is no cell phones, there are no text messages, no emails. There, there's no way to know exactly when his friend would arrive. Perhaps he was able to send word that uh, perhaps around this certain time uh, I'm going to be coming by and spending some time with you. But there's no way to know preci precisely when his arrival will be. And no doubt he is expecting him to show up at a decent hour when he could be prepared and be ready and be a proper host and entertain him the way that he wants to. But somehow, uh, either he has been delayed or something has happened. He has arrived much later than any uh, host would anticipate. He has come upon him at midnight. And because of the lateness of the hour, it has caught the host off guard. He is unaware. He's unprepared. He, he doesn't have groceries. The bed isn't made. Uh, nothing is in order. Everything is a wreck. And, and the man is frustrated. If you had let me know 
know earlier I, I could have been prepared. I could have went to the grocery store. I want to be a good host. I would have had a meal prepared. But we find that uh, his desire to be a good host is there. He said, regardless of how late you've come, I'm going to make sure uh, that we have a good meal before we go to bed. And so he goes next door. And it seems that he is unconcerned about the hour. Now, you may stay up till 3 in the morning on Instagram, but in this time at midnight, people have been in bed for hours. People have been asleep for hours. People are rising up before the sun rises to go to work. And so it is the middle of the night. But this does not bother this man. He is so brash and brazen. He steps out on the porch and goes next door to the next door neighbor and begins to pound on the door. He hears nothing. And that's where most people would stop. That's where most people would turn back and say, you know what, I, I've kind of made a fool out of myself. This, I, I'm biting off more than I could chew. We ought to just deal with it tonight and, and go to bed hungry and we'll try to do better tomorrow. And I've seen a lot of people make a feeble attempt to get a miracle for their situation and when nothing happens, they surrender the idea that it's even possible. I, I went down and got prayed for. I sent in a prayer request and nothing has changed. Therefore, it must not be meant to be for me. It must not be the will of God. It must not. Come on, I'm talking to somebody right now. I don't care how many times you've prayed before. I don't care how many times you sought God. Come on, I don't care how many times a preacher has laid his hands upon you. Why not try again? Why not knock again? Why not believe God one more time? I want to ask you, what have you got to lose tonight? If you have a need, you've already got a problem. You've already got sickness. You've already got pain. Why not give the Lord a chance to work? I'm telling you, there are miracles in this service tonight. There's a blessing for somebody in this place tonight. But this man seems to be unaware of what people's opinions are of him. He goes back to the door, determined to have someone open the door and to be able to feed his friend. He begins to knock again. Hey, perhaps he begins to holler. Hey, anybody in there? I know it's late, but I need someone to come down here and talk to me. Open this door. And he can hear rustling and thumping and perhaps one of the children begin to cry because they have been woken up out of a sound sleep and perhaps the wife, I know you can't imagine this, begins to get upset because she has spent two hours trying to talk to kids and rescue in a hostage negotiation trying to convince them to lay down and go to sleep and now this jerk next door has woken everybody up. What would happen to you at three in the morning if you had three small kids? Just put yourself in this position. But we find a man that is possessed with a need. We find a man that is driven by desire. I intend to have my requests fulfilled. And I don't care what you think about me. I don't, I don't care what popular opinion may be. I need this petition filled tonight. I'm not laying down. I'm not going to sleep. I will I won't be turned around. I won't be denied until something happens. I wonder how many more miracles would be loosed in the Inland Lighthouse Church if people began to get possessed with the spirit of importunity that says I will not stop until it happens. I will not quit believing until it changes. I will not stop praying until God moves this mountain out of my way. Come on, anybody here ready for a miracle in this house? Hallelujah. He pounds on the door. You can hear him talking. The friend begins to call out, listen, hey, look, I know we're friends and all, but... You know, this is a little much. You're asking a little bit too much. I've got to get up early. I've got the kids in the bed. And now they're awake again, but they're in bed. And you've woken the whole house up. Can't just wait until tomorrow. Go away. We want to finish getting some sleep before I have to go to work. 
Thoughts doesn't move this man. It doesn't change his mind. He is not deterred by what he is hearing. In fact, he goes back to the door and begins to pound again. Hey, listen, I know it's an inconvenience. I know I've woke up the family. But bless your heart, I'm going to stand on this porch and knock on this door until I see your face. I need this need met tonight. Something has to happen. Something has to change. Come on, where's the spirit of Jacob? I will not let go until you bless me. I'm not letting go until something breaks. I'm not going to quit praying until they walk in the door and are speaking with tongues. Come on, I'm not going to quit praying until my marriage is whole. I'm not going to stop until my mind is clear. I'm preaching to somebody right now. Come on, stop giving up. Just short of your miracle. Stop throwing in the towel. Just short of God answering. Come on, don't give up on your miracle. Don't give up on your family. Don't give up on an answer. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. The Bible said because... Just because they're friends doesn't mean that friendship enough will drive this man out of bed. He said, but what will get his attention is importunity. This persistence, this recklessness, this lack of concern for what everybody else is thinking. Webster's defines importunate as troublesomely urgent, overly persistent in request or demand. The Greek calls it shamelessness. That's how you ought to feel about your need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was shame that kept the woman with the issue of blood hidden. But finally, a little shamelessness got on her and says, I don't care what everybody thinks about me. I don't care if society says I'm unclean. I've got to get to Jesus because this has to change. I've lived like this long enough. I I, I know if I respond tonight, they're going to think I'm praying about the same problem. Who cares what somebody thinks about you? I hate to get prayer again. I've got prayed for 15 times. Make it 16 tonight. Come on, this could be the night that everything begins to change. I don't care what you think about me. I intend to leave here with a miracle. I intend to be made whole. I wonder if there's anybody that's determining right now something will happen I wish somebody would begin to declare to your situation it's changing starting right now it's changing somebody start knocking on that door somebody start knocking on that door somebody start waking the neighbors come on something's changing something's changing come on in the night house start knocking on the door of souls come on come on it's time it's time it's time for revival it's time for a harvest it's time for miracles signs and wonders Ah, importunity will drive you. Importunity says, I, I don't care what people think. I don't care what I look like. I don't care that people are sticking their head out the window all up and down the street. I have a need. I want a miracle more than I want to be concerned with your opinion. I want a miracle more than I want to be concerned about how straight my tie is or how polished I look tonight. I know we thumb our nose at the one that runs all the time and shouts all the time. Oh, they're the zealot. Uh, they're, they're just a little overly spiritual. Honey, I've seen some of those that were just driven by a persistent need. I says, I don't care what the church thinks. You can laugh at me, say I'm just a church kook, but I've got a need and I intend to get a miracle. I wish somebody would quit worrying about what those sitting beside you think about you right now. 
Oh, I haven't come to play games tonight, IOC. I wish those, oh, come on, come on. I wish that need would begin to drive you. Come on, come on. It may be midnight. It may be inconvenient. It could be easier to put this off until tomorrow. But the Lord says, knock one more time. Reach one more time. Ask what you will. Come on, he's here. Shakaraka. I feel it right now. I feel faith right now. I feel the miraculous tangible in this room. You can get healed while I'm preaching right now. Come on, let's be apostolic on a Wednesday night. Shut up, Somebody knock. Somebody start knocking. Somebody koshenamakaya. Somebody knock. It's here. It's here. You don't need nobody to touch you. You can get healed right now. You can start speaking in tongues right now. Come on, lift your faith. Lift your faith. Hallelujah. Woo! <laughs> it's here. This is what you prayed for, and God wants to loose it in this church. I know I've addressed it here before. Let me say it again. One of God's greatest methods of evangelism is the miraculous. Every time he starts performing miracles, the crowds begin to come. Why was this man left here? Was it for sin? He said no, but so the Son of Man could be glorified. Why did Lazarus die? So he could get glory. So others that question whether he was really who he said he was would realize he really has all power. Come on. The miracles aren't just to make the saints feel better, but they're meant to draw people. If I be lifted up, I'll draw. Come on, when God starts healing the sick, when he starts unstopping deaf ears, I'm telling you, he begins to be exalted. People start to see him for who he is. And when they see him for who he is, they are drawn, drawn. Come on, God's wanting to draw. Thank God for door knocking. Thank God for church cards and Bible studies. But what would happen if somebody got healed this week on your job? What would happen this semester if a student got healed on your campus? Come on. Don't tell me it can't happen. It'll happen when we begin to perform, when we begin to go, when we begin to believe these signs shall follow them that believe. Anybody believe it? Anybody ready for it tonight? We've got to stop being embarrassed about our needs. I can't help I have needs. I can't change sickness in my body. Last time I checked, I have no power to heal myself. I can't change the state of my emotions. And if you can, come tell me how. It takes God to do that. I can't bless myself. I can't change my circumstances. I can't even help my family unless God would do it. Come on, somebody. Stop being embarrassed about your condition. Come on. The man with the withered hand had no miracle until he was willing to uncover it and stretch it forth. I'm telling you, when you bring your need out into daylight, into the broad open, that is when God will begin to perform the miracle. Stop hiding. Stop cowering. Stop being intimidated. Stop being embarrassed. Say, I've got a problem, and I don't care what you think. I'm going to Jesus to get a miracle. I don't care if I wake the neighbors. I don't care if I make a scene tonight. Come on, come on, come on. 
Stop worrying about the crowd that wants to shout Bartimaeus's voice down. Don't make a scene. Don't embarrass all of us. Let the spirit of Bartimaeus get on somebody. I'm tired of being blind. I'm tired of being bound. I'm tired of being lost. Come on, I'm tired of feeling broken. I'm tired of my family situation looking hopeless. Jesus, I need you to come through. I need you to help. Come on, is there one or two desperate people in the house tonight? Come on, God's here. He's here to help somebody. He's here to reach somebody. Ah, I feel it trying to happen right now. I feel it breaking right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's here. He's here. He's here. Somebody's coming to the door, getting ready to knock right now. Hannah said, I don't care if I disrupt your little routine of a service. I'm barren and I'm tired of it. I want a child. I want a miracle. Make fun of me. Misunderstand my response. But I I believe I'm going to leave with a miracle. Come on, is there anybody here that says, I don't care what the good people in this church think right now. Something has to happen. Come on, if you can't live with your situation another week or two, why don't you respond right now if you need God to intervene why don't you make your move right now he's here come on it's here he's here Come on, we're not about to go through the motions tonight. This is an acute microwave Wednesday night Bible study altar call. The Holy Ghost is wanting to work. Come on, if you're responding, come on right now. If you're going to make a move, go ahead. Go ahead right now. Come on, if you're not able to, you can get healed right there in your chair. God can feel you right where you're seated. Come on. I want you to get ready, though. I want you to get ready. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I want you to lift your faith right now all across this house. If you've come down to the front, I want you to make contact with somebody right now. I don't care if you have a need or not. I want you to connect with somebody beside you. There's a multiplicity and a multiplication of power of the Holy Ghost when we begin to join and contact with one another. I want you to link up with somebody right now and I want you to lift your voice as loud as you can right now. Come on all across this house. I want you to begin to pray the prayer of faith. Come on at the top of your lungs right now. Don't worry about Wednesday night protocol. Somebody get in the Holy Ghost. If you need the Holy Ghost, you can get it right now. Come on, you can be forgiven right now. You can be healed in your back, in your spine, in your knees. Come on. Come on. I feel it. I want you to believe right now that it will happen. It will happen. It will happen. It will happen in the name of Jesus. For you. 